Welcome to Life with Shan. Today we're going to talk about a recap of It Ends With Us. Today, actually, as I'm filming this, is the day that It Starts With Us comes out, which I believe is one of the most anticipated reads of 2022 for almost all of Book Talk, Booktube, and Bookstagram. So the prequel, It Ends With Us, which came out in 2016 by Colleen Hoover, blew up on TikTok recently. And now the sequel comes out and I am very excited and want to give you a recap of what happens in It Ends With Us. So this video for It Ends With Us will have spoilers because it is a summary recap of It Ends With Us. Basically, I reread it so you don't have to. I also want to give that it has quite a few trigger warnings such as gun victims, gunshots, abuse, um, sexual assault, and I will link a great resource for trigger warnings below. The book starts with Lily Bloom. She is the main character throughout the whole novel, but she, in the beginning of the book, is sitting on the edge of a building. She is pondering about her father's funeral, which she attended today, and she also gave the eulogy. She shares that her eulogy did not have anything good to say, so she basically didn't say anything at all about her dad. And while she's up there, just kind of in an open space to have time to think and clear her mind, another person comes out on the balcony and is beating up some of the patio furniture. He later introduces himself and he is Ryle. And so Lily and Ryle kind of just talk a little bit. Ryle shares that he's a doctor and he does surgeries and that he's had a tough day and he was saying how there was a kid who came in and this little kid shot his brother and he thought it was a fake gun he thought it was a toy gun and he shot his brother and his brother died and lily says i can only imagine what that kid who survived is going to go through the rest of his life and that is the beginning of lily and ryle where they start their inside joke not joke but habit of naked truths and sharing open truths about each other and what they've gone through and Ryle clearly shares that he's not the relationship type and Lily says that she is. And so then they don't really do anything that night. After that first night, six months go by before they see one another again. During those six months, Lily is working to open her own floral shop called Lily Blooms, just like her name. And she's also thinking about her past relationship with a guy named Atlas. When Lily was in high school, she realized that a student at her school was also staying at the abandoned house next to her home. She quickly realized that there's probably no water or electricity in that home and that he is actually homeless and he's just using that house to stay, have a shelter. So Lily gradually allows him to like come over when he needs to shower while her parents are at work and then slowly but surely she's helping feed him, keeping him warm with blankets and they grow a friendship and they end up watching the Ellen show together. And one of Lily's quirky things is that when she was in high school, she would write letters to Ellen DeGeneres because she loved the Ellen show. So she was writing about all these things to Ellen and also about the abuse her mother was experiencing from Lily's father. So throughout this, Atlas gradually also sees what's happening with Lily's dad and some events happen that kind of pushed Lily to be like, we should call the police, we should call the police. And they just don't quite get to calling the police. And that's really it until Lily opens her shop, her flower shop, and she ends up hiring Eliza. And Eliza's this really nice girl who kind of just came by and was like, I'll volunteer, I wanna help out, I have so many ideas, I'm really good with Pinterest. And one of her stories is that she unfortunately cannot have children so she's really looking for something new to invest her time in and focus on and then quickly lily realizes that eliza is ryle's sister and she feels guilty about bringing her on and that ryle might think she's crazy trying to connect to him in any way that she can through his family or anything so this kind of deters Lily a little bit, but in the end, she realizes Eliza is a great person to have in her corner, especially when opening her flower shop. Now Lily and Ryle are seeing a lot more of one another, especially that Lily is working with Ryle's sister. 
and their relationship starts to grow because Ryle decides I haven't been able to stop thinking about you, Lily, and I think I can make it work and I want to be in a relationship. And so now that he is committed, Lily starts thinking, okay, yes, let's do it. And she's going into this relationship and she's also still grieving the death of her father and processing the abuse that he had done to her and her mother. And throughout this time, she's just so happy and excited to have Ryle and to be a part of a family that Ryle's in and being close with Ryle's sister, Eliza, and her husband. And then she meets Ryle's mom and she just feels so excited to be a part of this. And then there's an incident. One night at home, Ryle and Lily are hanging out and Ryle gets upset and he's outraged and he physically takes it out on Lily. But Lily's like, it's okay. Cause Ryle is very upset that this happened. He's very apologetic. Like it's a one and done thing. If he does it again, I'm leaving him. He is not my father. Like this is what love is. And so Lily sticks it out for a little while. But after the incident, they then go out to eat the next day with um, Eliza and Eliza's husband. And they're at the restaurant. Lily has obvious damage done on her face and Ryle has some on his hand. And she ends up bumping into Atlas, the guy from when she was in high school who lived next door. And Atlas quickly realizes what happened when he sees Ryle's hand and he sees Lily. So then Lily gets up and goes to the bathroom and Atlas comes in and he um, talks to her. He says like, you're like your mother, you need to leave him. This isn't good for you. You deserve better. And throughout all this, Atlas slips his phone number into Lily's phone case. That way, if anything does happen, Lily has his number. After this, Ryle sees Atlas come out of the bathroom with Lily and he starts asking questions and he's not happy and Lily's kind of afraid that he's gonna have another incident as he had the night before. However, after they let it out and they talk, well not talk, they just, everything gets out. Lily then fills Ryle in on that was Atlas from when I was in high school and tells him about the journals that she would write to Ellen but she never sent to Ellen and then she starts thinking again about her relationship with Atlas in high school and how it went from a friendship to a romance and how it ended with her father finding out. And there were times when Atlas was there during the abuse that her father would have. But the night that Lily's father realizes Atlas is there, he beats Atlas. And then you find out that Atlas then went into the military and they haven't been in contact since. However, they had always talked about Boston when they were friends and romantically involved. And Atlas ended up giving Lily a better in Boston magnet because that's where he wanted to live. And that was kind of one of the maybe subconscious reasons Lily moved to Boston, but she also wanted to give Boston a try because she thought for so long that Boston was great and she wanted to give it a go. In the midst of all this, Lily and Atlas and thinking about high school and then developing the relationship with Ryle, Lily's friend Eliza finds out that she's actually pregnant and it worked and they end up having a baby and then it gets Lily and Ryle like, oh, maybe we could have a baby. After that incident and them rekindling and everything with Atlas, Lily ends up deciding to spontaneously marry Ryle and they talk everything out on the way there. Um, they fly to Vegas and Ryle's sister and mom comes and then Lily's mom comes and they're like, oh, maybe one day we'll have kids. This is how we'll do our finances. And Lily is on top of the world until after they get married, Ryle finds the phone number that Atlas put in the back of her phone and he's not happy about it. He's very upset. And then next thing you know, Lily wakes up on the bed and she's waking up from being unconscious and Ryle says she fell down the stairs and Lily knows that she did not fall down the stairs. After that, 
Eliza pulls Lily and Ryle aside and tells Ryle, you need to tell her. And Lily's freaking out about what it is and Ryle explains that the story from the first night that they met about a brother accidentally shooting his older brother was actually Ryle's story and he accidentally shot his older brother when he was a kid and that he's still dealing with the trauma of that and that sometimes he needs help and he's asking Lily to help him and recognize the signs of when he needs space and when he needs to talk to someone. So Lily's like, okay, I can do that. But then there's another incident and Ryle finds the journals and then goes through all of Lily's things to figure out her relationship with Atlas and accuse her of it and he almost rapes her and then he beats her and so she ends up kicking him out and she calls Atlas and Atlas takes her to the hospital where she then finds out she's pregnant. After being shocked by the pregnancy, she stays with Atlas for a little while. Ryle's now in off at a work thing for a few weeks and it gives Lily space to think everything through. And she needs to process what she's gonna do with the baby, her marriage, and just Atlas and life in general. So she doesn't wanna tell anyone, but she still hangs out with Eliza and everything. And she sits down with Eliza and she tells Eliza, about the abuse and about the baby and Eliza is so excited about the baby and she's understanding of the abuse. She says, look, he's my brother. I want Ryle to be happy, but you're my best friend, Lily. And if you stay with him, I will not talk to you again. And that that's the type of friend we all need. We all need an Eliza in our life. And I also hope that all of us can be an Eliza and recognize things like that. So then after that type of reaction, Lily builds up the courage to then say, I'm gonna keep the baby, and she sees Ryle, and she tells Ryle about the baby. And Ryle's like, we need to stay together. I was totally gonna to give you space, but now that you're pregnant, we can make this work. And Lily says, look, it is not fair to me, it's not fair to you or the baby to make this decision while I'm still pregnant. So she waits until after she gives birth to the baby. He helps out with her during the pregnancy. She goes into labor, she is at the hospital, she gives birth, and she instantly decides, Ryle, what would you do if this little girl came home and said, my partner beats me, he hurt me, but he didn't mean it, he apologized, we're okay. And Ryle cried it out and Lily was upset and she said, we need to get a divorce and we need to figure out a plan. And Ryle is just thankful that he is able to be a part of the baby's life, which honestly, not every abuser acts that way. And I love how Colleen Hoover did this because Ryle is so likable. He's so like, like I'll be better. I can make this work. I have issues, but we have to figure it out together. That's what our vows meant. But it's not, that's not what love is supposed to be. And that's what Lily puts together. But the fact that as a reader, you think, okay, yeah, Ryle's pretty messed up, but you can see in the ways that Lily would want to stay with him, especially now that there's a baby involved. But then the book kind of ends with Lily saying, it ends with us. The abuse ends with us. This child is not going to live in a home that I lived in growing up. This is the end of it. It ends with Ryle and I. And then you hit the epilogue. She's taking Emerson to go see Ryle and she's gonna hand Ryle over for custody for the day or something. And she, on the way there, bumps into Atlas. And so she gives Emerson to Ryle and then she runs after Atlas. And now I have waited years, but the sequel's coming out today. So now we get to see the sequel.